So we are going to talk about parametric curves and how to find the arc length of a curve. To start out, we have to realize that if we are looking at a vector, such as r, in terms of its x and y components, we could have both of those components be functions of some other variable t. And in that case, we would have a vector function, r of t, being equal to x of t and y of t as the components. Let's look at one example of that to see exactly what is going on. If we chose r of t to be equal to cosine of t and the square root of t. First of all, if we think about the graphs of each of these components, cosine of t and root t, well, the cosine of t is going to start at 1 and it's going to oscillate back and forth just like that. On the other hand, the square root of t is going to start at 0 and it's going to increase up, but it's going to start to level off as time increases because that square root function starts to slow down. So now we're going to put these two together into the graph of a vector function. If we start at t equals 0, we're going to be looking at the x component of cosine 0, which is 1, and the y component, the square root of 0, is just 0. So we're going to start here. At the beginning, our x component is going to continue oscillating back and forth. But our y component is going to start to slow down as we increase. So the elements of that cosine wave are going to start getting closer and closer together, just like that. Now what we want to start thinking about is how can we do calculus on these kinds of curves. In particular, what is the derivative of our vector function of t? So let's think about what that means. The derivative talks about how much something is changing with respect to, in this case, the variable t. Remember that both components of a vector act independently. We can have one change while the other stays the same, or vice versa. So if we want the derivative of the whole vector, well, what we can do is look at how much is the x changing and how much is the y changing, which means we're simply going to take x prime of t and y prime of t. And the fact that this is a vector indicates that the derivative has some direction. For example, if we look at this graph, the derivative of our function at this point is going to be a vector pointing in that direction, because as t increases, our vector is moving along that path. So that's the derivative of a vector function. And we're going to look at one more thing, which is, because this derivative has a direction, we could sort of think about it as the velocity vector, or v. If we wanted the magnitude of velocity, that's what we define as speed. And in this case, it's going to be the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. That's just the magnitude of a two-dimensional vector. From this information, we can start to develop a formula for the arc length of a curve between two different values of t. In order to do that, we have to take another approach about what exactly the arc length is. The arc length is defined as how long the curve is between two different points. But another way that we could say that is the total distance that someone would travel if they started at the first point of the curve and went all the way to the second point on the curve following that path. What is the derivative of distance? Well, the derivative with respect to time of distance, that's going to be speed. And speed is the magnitude of velocity. That's what we found earlier, the magnitude of the velocity here. That's our speed, and it's equal to this square root equation. So if speed is the derivative of distance, then the way that we get the distance back is by integrating that derivative function. If we integrate speed with respect to time, that's going to give us our distance back, because remember, the integral of a derivative gives us back the original function. And remember, distance is the same thing as arc length. So if we want to numerically calculate our arc length, which will sometimes be denoted by the letter s, all we have to do is take our integral, plug in our values for t1 and t2, and substitute in speed for this square root function that we had earlier. Since we know the functions x prime of t and y prime of t from our original vector function, we can plug those in and give us the arc length, which is just the integral of speed.